Hi, today I want to talk about build this tool and uh, some of the problems that it has. And I also want to talk about the Vesk tool, which is my attempt at solving those problems by doing a complete redesign and rewrite, more or less, of build easy tool. So what are the problems with build easy tool? The first one is that uh, it's not very modular. It consists of quite few files and some of those files like mainwindow.cpp is very big. It consists of uh, almost 3000 lines of source code and uh, it has uh, functionality for dealing with the user interface and also for some logic that really should be split into other different files. And the reason for splitting it like that is that for one thing it's a lot easier to deal with smaller files than one with 3000 lines and things all over the place. And another reason is that if you want to make uh, an app using QML for example for a mobile device is that then you have to re-implement re more or less this whole file in the app as well. You could uh, for example uh, try to split this file into modules here and uh, share as much as you can between the app and the well, desktop application but when you already got to this point it's not so easy to split it and it will not be very clean either. And the next big file is the user interface file which has the whole user interface of build these tool in one single file and this one is added to using Qt Designer which generates a big XML and this means that uh, well for example if you are if you have two developers and you want to make two different parts, suppose I want to make some new core functionality and someone wants to make uh, work on the ADC app and we want to merge those, then there is no easy way to do that. Then uh, I have to more or less look at the updates and add them manually in the user interface. At least as far as I know, I don't know if there's any automatic way or semi automatic way to merge it using the XML file. Anyway. That's not very convenient. And the next problem is that uh, even though a lot of functionality that should be split is collected in single files, is that information that should not be split is split all over the place. And in particular this information is about configuration parameters for the VASC. Now suppose I want to add a new parameter, some kind of current limit or so to the VASC. Then I add it uh, in Eclipse in the source code and I use it everywhere it has to be used. And I add it to the serialization in commands.c. And then I go to build DC tool. And the first thing I have to do is to open data type, the data types file and add it to a big struct with uh, the parameters. And then I, ho I have to open packet interface and uh, define how to serialize it and deserialize it something like this and how to scale it while doing that and so on and uh, make sure that it is in the correct order and then I have it open the UI file and add a new box for it and put it into the proper place and so on and uh, when I add a new editor somewhere in the UI for example in FOC then I also have some information here for example this uh, prefix which is kp in this value, we can also have a suffix if we have a unit, the amount of decimals, the minimum maximum value and the step size in the, sc in the scroll bar. And uh, some parameters have this and they also have uh, a short description in the tooltip that you can edit. Not all of them have that. And uh, this is really a mess. You have uh, a lot of information added, it, added in the UI and if you create a new box or move something or so, then all of this is lost and you have to edit it again. Which uh, really is not very encouraging when you create documentation for the different parts. And after you've done that, you have to go to the main window and write the logic to parse this box and put it into the configuration struct and also how to get it from the struct into the main window. And then you have to edit another file, serialization, which is used to write and read XML files. And uh, then you're done. And this is a lot more work and a lot more complicated than it has to be. And this is the main reason that I haven't added so much new functionality to build these regarding the apps. 
for example, uh, ramping for the PPM map and uh, well, speed limits that can, can be switched on and off for the non-shock app because uh, it's more work than it has to be. And I have known all the time that I have to redo this sooner or later anyway. And uh, then I just have more work to redo then. And I also have work now that I really waste because I cannot reuse it later when I make the new rewrite. And this brings us to Vesk tool. And the first thing I thought about when starting a Vesk tool is how to modularize things. You can see that even though Vesk tool is uh, maybe halfway to being ready for the first beta version, it has uh, about 60 files or so of source code compared to build this tool, which has 20. And for both cases, this is including the user interface files. So uh, some of those files or most of those files are simply for the back end that don't have so much to do with dealing, arranging things in the user interface. And uh, the configuration parameters that I mentioned before are uh, split into one class that has all the data structures and information about them and one class for dealing with them. And this class uh, has, some inf uh, has some functions for generating editors for them and for updating them and also has some signals and slots when they're updated and so on. And I'm going to show soon how, how all of this works. Not all of it maybe, but some of the advantages that you get. And uh, when adding configuration parameters like this, you can do that in one place. Currently I have a, just a config setup file but you could also use an XML file where I have updated every parameter, something like this. For example, the PWM mode, which is a uh, type EDAM and has three different values, which I have typed the string for. I also typed the description for it and a bit longer name than the name in uh, the MC configuration. And you can also see that the name for it is a string this time instead of uh, a value in a struct. Uh, there is a bit more overhead dealing with strings, but since you don't have a huge number of parameters and you don't change them often and uh, the computer is quite efficient, it doesn't really matter at all. They're also stored in the hash table so you can access them really fast. And uh, yeah, this is enum. If you look at double for example, then uh, you enter information about the default value, the maximum, the minimum, the step size, and you can also enter the amount of decimals, like all the things that you added in the UI, and the description, and the long name, and the suffix, and you can also have a... No, well, actually, I haven't added a prefix, but you don't really need a prefix since you have the description for every parameter or the long name. And uh, you also enter information about how to serialize it when sending it and receiving it over USB. For example, this one is sent as a 32-bit uh, floating point number scaled uh, with 10 to the power of 3. And uh, this is really all you need to know about parameters. And uh, currently have added all the types that are used in the VESC. And uh, in addition to this information, you also have to enter just make a string list of uh, all the different parameters that you have and in the order which they are, which is used when sending and receiving them from the VASC. And uh, this is also used for generating and opening XML files. So all of the things that you did in those different files is collected in one different place, you just make this block for one parameter and add it where you want to have it in the serialization order. And I've done this more or less for all the motor configuration parameters, which took quite some time the past days. And then when you want to use them, let's look at an example. So uh, let's look at a simple motor configuration that it started on doing, which is a um, separate UI file this time that we can open. And right now it consists of a couple of tabs 
which have those uh, parent tables, which is another widget that I created, which are empty. So I don't add so much information, just add the tabs and some tables. For voltage I also added, this is for the voltage cutoffs, and I also added a simple calculator to calculate uh, the voltage cutoffs based on the battery type and the amount of cells you have, and RPM and temp and so on. And creating this user interface is really quick, you just throw it together, and then in the source code file for it, you only have to, let's see, where is it, this one. You only have to populate those uh, tables with the parameter names from the motor configuration and it will generate the appropriate editor and so on for it. And this whole thing consists of less than 100 lines of source code right now, including the battery calculator. And uh, we also have the information for uh, serialization, deserialization, and opening and writing XML files and so on. And uh, you also have this information platform independent, so it doesn't depend on the UI interface. Well, actually this depends on the UI and this, but the parameters and the serialization and so on, and how to write and read it from the VESC, doesn't depend on the platform. And I have also split information, uh, split the interface for the VESC into one VESC interface file that has uh, more or less uh, widget independent functions and also I've split up the commands file to uh, not include the UDP interface for example and not include to include the checksum generation and so on. It just generates the raw packets and then you can use this one to generate like UDP packets or put them together with checksums and so on for sending them over the USB port to the VESC or adding, well, using a Bluetooth Low Energy Transceiver or so. So that's also a bit more convenient. So let's have a look at the new VASC tool interface, what it looks like now. Let's see if it starts. So this is what we have. First you can see that uh, there are more uh, icon icons or actually I did have any icons at all before and now I tried to add icons for everything and try to make them consistent. Some of them are from, uh, well, from the material Android icons and some of them I created myself using Inkscape. I'm not very good at this but I'm starting to kind of get the hang of creating icons for this. And uh, there is also a bar where you can save and load configurations and uh, the motor and the app configuration which also can be saved and loaded this time. And uh, all of this works. I also created a small uh, display widget for what's going on with uh, the duty cycle and the current while running a motor. You can have a look at that. Let's connect and activate keyboard control, which is a button here and not on by default. And activate real time data. And you can see when I run it using the keyboard, then that does update. <coughs> So, going back to this motor configuration file, you saw that I had uh, this uh, file with 100 lines of source code or less than that for adding the parameters and this short UI file. And this is what it looks like in VESC right now. So those tables are populated. This one only had uh, the motor type and the currents have a bit more values and so on. And all of those, uh, well, entries which are generated by the config parameters file class have uh, well small buttons one for loading the current value on the VESC one for loading the default value and also an information button that shows a pop-up with some description about it and this is a lot easier to find than the structure before because everything is consistent and uh, the voltage parameters have uh, Two values now and you can also calculate the battery voltage and update them, read them from the VASC, you can read all the values at the same time, you can write them back. And I've started to put together some other pages but uh, mostly this has been for just testing things out. I will uh, spend some time on polishing those later when I'm finished with adding all the parameters and uh, getting all the details of the backend and so on right.
I also made a new editor for Mozart description with a bit better buttons and so on. And I also added a debug console that prints what is going on with the VASC and timestamps for it. For example, if you disconnect, you can see that the state is changes to not connected. And uh, when you read the app configuration, which isn't fully implemented yet, you get lots of errors and those are shown in red. And those are actually printed using uh, queue warning and queue debug from the source code. And then you can see which file generated them and which function, which line and what the actual message is. So this is really convenient for, for debugging. <coughs> you can also clear this file. Now, I think that I might be ready with the first alpha version in uh, a couple of uh, weeks, maybe. But it has been a bit more work than I thought, even though I knew that it was going to be a lot of work. And also while doing this, especially while adding all the configuration parameters and thinking of what they are doing and the description for on, so on, I realized that some of them were not really used properly. So some of them were removed and I moved them a bit forth and back. And for example, the RPM limits in the apps, so I've moved them to a global setting with RPM cutoff that works even for the 30 mode. And RPM control mode. So uh, while going through all of this, I have been updating the source code for the VASC at the same time, which uh, means that it's not very stable right now and I don't really want to up upload it until I'm done doing that and confirm that most things are working at least. So yeah, that's the updates I have for now.